welcome back. Today I'm here with my February wrap up. Um, if my background looks different, it's because I decided to put up this beautiful tapestry that came in my Blood Witch Fae Crate box because I love the Witchlands, so I hope you guys enjoy. Um, I have pre-filmed some videos, so not all of it will look like this, but I just thought I would throw that out there. One other thing that is completely unrelated to my wrap-up is I got this beautiful gift from my friend Lauren at the Novel Lush. It says Beautifully Bookish Bethany on a mug, and I love it so much. Anyway, okay, I'll stop now. I had a really great reading month in February. I read a lot, actually. Um, in fact, I ended up reading an average of a book a day. I read 28 things in February. If you guys are new to my channel and haven't seen my wrap-ups before, I always start off by talking about my reading stats for the month, and then I will talk about all of the books that I read in order, starting from my lowest rated books up to my highest rated books. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into my stats. This month I read 28 books. This includes two graphic novels, 10 audiobooks. Yes, we're keeping strong with the audiobooks. One other thing I wanted to mention is I have been using audiobooks from my library as a way of getting to some of the backlist titles on my TBR shelves. So I thought I would start including a stat on that of how many of the audiobooks I listened to moved things off of my TBR. And this month, eight of the 10 audiobooks that I listened to were books that I had physically on my shelves that I hadn't gotten to. So I was able to move eight books off my TBR shelf this month through listening to audiobooks, which I am very, very happy about. This month I read six arcs. I had two books that were rereads. And this month for Black History Month, I also decided to track how many books by Black authors I read, and I think the total number was eight. I might have been missing one in that count, but it was around eight. This year I set a goal for myself of reading an average of one book a month of nonfiction, one book a month of translated fiction, and one book a month by an indie author. So let's talk about how I did with that this month. I finally read a book that was translated fiction. It was not the book that was on my original TBR for the month, but I did read one work of translated fiction, which is a win. I also did read one book that was nonfiction, and I read two books by indie authors. One of them was a self-published indie author, and the other one was traditionally published, but from a very, very small indie press. In terms of age categories, this month I read predominantly young adult novels. 17 of the books that I read in February were YA, and 11 of them were targeted at an adult audience. So a little bit off from what my stats usually are, um, next month that may change. All right, let's talk a little bit about genre breakdown. As usual, my most read genre was fantasy. I read nine books that fall into a fantasy category. Four of the books that I read were sci-fi. Two books were superhero books. I never really know where to put them in sci-fi fantasy, so I've just given them their own category on my spreadsheet. I read one book that was literary fiction, five books that were romance, one book that was nonfiction, one thriller, one book of poetry, one mystery, and four contemporary. Okay, last thing in my stats is let's talk about my star ratings. In general, I had a really good reading month. Most of the books that I read I rated pretty high, but I did have a few that were not so great. I had one book that I gave two stars and one book that I gave two and a half stars. Those weren't great. I also had two books that got three stars for me, which means they were decent, not terrible, but not amazing. I had nine four star reads, four four and a half star reads, nine five star reads, and this month I had two books that I gave six stars. In my personal rating scale, a six star read is a favorite of the year, and this month again there were two, which is pretty awesome. And this month I also had three DNFs. I'll start by talking a little bit about the books that I DNF'd and why I DNF'd them. I know this is more than usual. I do have so many books right now on my TBR that I want to read and need to read that when something just isn't working for me, uh, yeah, I DNF it. So let's talk about the things that I DNF'd this month. The first book that I DNF'd is Dead Girl Running by Christina Dodd. This is kind of a romantic suspense slash thriller, and in this case it was the writing style that was not working for me. I didn't get super far into this, but I just, I, I couldn't connect with the writing style. I can't say much about the plot, like that might be fine. But stylistically, yeah, I was having a hard time with that. The next book that I DNF is one that I was actually supposed to buddy read with Jocelyn over at Yogi with a book, but yeah, this also wasn't really working for me. I'm sure it's a perfectly fine book, but not my thing so much. This is Halsey Street by Nina Coster. I think this book was just much more literary fiction than I wanted it to be. 
or had expected it to be and the sort of navel gazy type of it that I don't particularly prefer reading except for in specific cases. And um, so because I think this is probably a perfectly good book, I decided to go ahead and DNF it. I read a few chapters of it and it just it just wasn't for me. So sorry. And the final book that I DNF'd this month is one that had been on my TBR from a while back. This is called Gorgeous by Paul Rednick. This is an older book. It is YA about a girl who gets the opportunity to be turned into the most beautiful woman in the world and whatever. And it seemed like it would be fun. I read, I don't know, how much did I even read of this? I didn't even read that much. I read like maybe 15% of this. Um, I don't think it has aged well. There were a lot of things that kind of rubbed me the wrong way about the way that they were talking about different groups of people and models and there and none of it like one of one or two of those things on their own I would have just kind of like pushed past but there was a lot of it I didn't even get that far into it and, I, and there were so many things that I was like uh, uh, like I don't know this wouldn't work so well today um, I'm sure it's a product of its time I wasn't enjoying it enough to keep reading so I'm DNFing this one. That being said, let's start by talking about my two and two and a half star <laughs> reads of the month. Um, unfortunately, the book that I gave two stars was actually the last book that I read in February, so it was kind of a depressing way to end the month. Um, and uh, yeah, this was unfortunate. It's not a terrible book, but let's just talk about this. This is Low Country Hero by Lee Tobin McLean. This is actually an arc of a book that I was sent for review by Harlequin and it did come out on February 26th so thank you for sending this to me. Unfortunately I think this was just not the book for me. It's not a badly written book but it was really not what I expected and not what I want to have in my romance. Low Country Hero follows a ex-military man who grew up in a home where his mom had experienced domestic violence and a woman who's on the run from the abusive father of her children. She is also the mom of two five-year-old girls and it's about this romance that develops between these two characters. However, this book was really, really heavy and dark and angsty, all of which are not things that I really look for in my romance, as well as there were some things that happened near the end of the book that I found to be really anxiety producing for me. They were things that if I had known they would be in the book, I probably would not have agreed to review it. So this was just really not the book for me. There is a lot of emphasis on this issue of domestic violence and trauma as it affects both characters and their history. It's it's a really, really big theme in the book. I know it's an important issue, but for romance as a genre, um, that's really not something so much that I look for. Also, they had a lot of angsty sort of internal conflict in their relationship of just miscommunicating or taking things the wrong way which I don't really prefer either and then the thing that kind of pushed this way down for me was near the end of the book spoiler warning I'll put my hand down when I'm done talking about spoilers in case you plan on reading it but near the end of the book the abusive father of the kids comes back and kidnaps the girls um, and then they get them back and he kidnaps her and there's violence there's threat of rape it was really really heavy and I do not like reading about things like that like children being kidnapped um, and this really stuck with me in a negative way for a while so yeah I was pretty upset by that, to be perfectly honest it's not something I want in romance sometimes I'm fine with that kind of stuff if it's in a genre like a thriller where I know that there's going to be tension and anxiety and I'm mentally prepared for it in this case I wasn't so I think you should be forewarned going in and also th this is a positive or negative depending on what you go to romance for but there is not any sex in this book either they do kiss on a couple of occasions and that's about as far as it goes so it's a pretty heavy dark romance novel. I'm not sure that it should have been published as romance, um, but I'm sure there are people who will love it. It's not poorly written, although I will say maybe take a look at some of the other reviews. People brought up some other potentially problematic issues. Anyway, all that to say, <laughs> this was unfortunately not the book for me. I gave it two stars. Next I had one two and a half star read and this was really disappointing. It was a book that I thought I would really be into and was not. This was an e-arc that I got from NetGalley. It is Enchanté by Gita Trelis. This has been a pretty anticipated book for a lot of people. It's a alternate history sort of fantasy novel set in Paris just prior to the revolution, which sounds really great. Unfortunately, there were a, 
a lot of things about this book that just really didn't work for me. I'm gonna look at my Goodreads, I'm gonna pull up my Goodreads review because, yeah. Like a revolutionary par Paris with magic sounds super cool. I thought this was okay. There were some things that I thought were done well and some areas that could really use some improvement. Number one, I liked the magic system. I thought it was interesting, it felt fresh, it was well thought out. However, I do have some pause with it as well since this is the book targeted at a teen audience, um, just for people to be aware of. What's interesting about it is that magic is fueled by pain and sorrow and grief. And so then integral to the magic system is self-harm, both physically and emotionally. So that could be triggering for some people. Be aware that that content is in there. Also, I'm not sure it's handled with the right amount of care, given the fact that it's a YA book. That is a sort of thing within a magic system that I've seen done in other books and adult novels, and I don't necessarily have a problem with it as a magic system, but given the audience, eh, I don't know, I'm, I'm on the fence about it. I also had some issues with the villain in this story. He sometimes felt a little too like sort of mustache twirly, not enough complexity to his character, which I wanted to see more of. And then at the end of the book, we all of a sudden get this backstory that's supposed to kind of humanize him. I thought it was too little too late. I found the way that his arc in this book ends to be very unsatisfying. I just didn't I didn't particularly like it. The pacing also wasn't great. Some parts of this book were really compelling and really interesting and well done and do some really interesting things with the time period and with Marie Antoinette and the and sort of the disparity amongst the wealthy and the not wealthy. There were some like great things done there but then there were also parts that I thought were overly descriptive that weren't terribly interesting where it was really dragging and it was hard to push myself through it so the pacing was like mixed. Sometimes it was good, sometimes I had a hard time with it. And one other thing to be aware of with this is that the main character does a lot of really really dumb things. So some people don't mind that in their heroines, other people, this is like what we like to call the too dumb to live heroine. <laughs> Uh, and the main character in this book is definitely that. She does a lot of stuff that I'm like what the hell are you doing? This is really really dumb. Um, so be aware that's in there as well if that's something that bothers you. Some people are bothered by that. I don't always hate it. I didn't particularly enjoy it here, but it is something to point out. One thing that I do think this book does really well is in drawing out what addiction might look like and the damage that it can do to a person and to the people that they love and the people around them. That is definitely something you see here with addictions to gambling and addictions to magic. So uh, yeah, this was a two and a half star read for me. I didn't love it. It wasn't terrible, like there were some positive things to it, but there were enough issues with it that I couldn't rate it much higher than two and a half stars, unfortunately. Moving on, let's talk about my three star reads. There were two of them this month, and three stars is not a bad book, but I will say in both cases these were disappointing reads for me. They were both books that I had anticipated being much higher ratings than they were, so while neither of them were bad books, they were disappointments because I thought they were going to be like four or five star reads and unfortunately they weren't. The first one that I read this month is The Fates Divide by Veronica Roth. This is the sequel to Carve the Mark. Now um, I do realize that Carve the Mark has been quite a polarizing book. I think if you want to hear somebody talk about it who I think has really good insight and I agree with, I would go check out Francina Simone's video on Carve the Mark. I think she does a really good job of unpacking uh, the controversy and why she and I both don't think that it's a problematic book. That being said, I really loved the first book in this duology. It was a five star read for me. This one was okay. It wasn't great. The pacing wasn't great. It wasn't as interesting. Um, I don't know. Like, and, and to be fair to Veronica Roth, I, I feel like it probably must have been a little bit difficult to get back on board and write the rest of this story given the craziness of people. So I didn't think it was a bad book. I was hoping for it to be really amazing because I loved the world that she started to create in Carve the Mark. This one was, it was fine. There were things that I really liked about it. There were other things that were just okay about it. Three stars. So yeah, this one was not bad, but a little bit disappointing. And I did, did I read this on audio? I think I listened to part of this on audio and then read the rest physically. I think that's what I ended up doing with this. Yeah. And then the other three star read that I had this month, <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I feel bad because I know, like I know some of the people who watch this channel, this was like a favorite book for them. So I'm sorry, I'm so glad that you loved this, it just did not 
quite do it for me in the same way. This was Strange Grace by Tessa Grattan. <sighs> yeah, so I know Strange Grace has been a, like a booktube darling of some people. I, okay, so here's the thing. Um, I can definitely see why some people have been loving it a lot, but for a variety of reasons it just didn't connect with, you, with me as much. So Strange Grace is this really sort of dark witchy tale about a town where the people have kind of made a pact with the devil, I guess. And so once every seven years they send their best boy into the forest and most times he dies. And then as a result the town has prosperity and people don't get sick and people don't die early and like births go well and they get crops are grown well and all these things happen as a result. But now all of a sudden something is going wrong and we follow these three teen characters um, as they interact with this problem. So I won't say much more about the plot than that. It Okay, so the writing is beautiful. Tessa Grattan writes beautifully. Like the actual way that she constructs sentences and puts words together is beautiful. However, I didn't get along super well with the way the story was told, the sort of like flashbacks and forwards. It was a little bit like it just didn't work super well for me. The other thing about this is I think I tend to really love character driven stories and I didn't really connect with the characters. I didn't feel like they were fully fleshed out enough for me. I didn't necessarily understand their motivations really well or feel like they always made a lot of sense. And I didn't have strong feelings about the romance. There's sort of this polyamorous relationship that develops between these three characters. It's a girl and two boys. Um, which I know some people have also really been loving. I didn't really care one way or another. Like I just, there was never anything that got me super invested in any of those relationships or in the characters. I, for whatever reason, just didn't really connect with them. I know that there are people who did, who loved it and felt really seen by this, uh, which is great. That's valid. I'm happy that worked for you. For me, it was a case of it being really beautiful writing, but not feeling like the characters were developed enough for me, not really connecting with the characters or the development of their relationship with each other. The other thing about this is, which is funny because I know other people think otherwise, for me I thought that the ending was kind of lackluster and predictable. Like it followed what I would have expected it to follow. I didn't find the reveal at the end to be terribly surprising. And so I was just like, yeah, it's fine. Um, so it wasn't a bad book. The writing itself is beautiful. I did give it three stars. It just wasn't a huge hit for me. And I did listen to this one on audio. I got it out from my library. Now that that's out of the way, we can talk about my four star reads. There were a lot of them. I think nine. Was it nine four star reads? Yes nine four star reads. We had a lot of four star reads this month. The first book that I gave four stars to is one that was a very pleasant surprise. I didn't expect to enjoy this as much as I did. This is Stroke of Luck by BJ Daniels. This is another arc that I was sent from Harlequin. This went on sale February 19th. Um, I had never read anything by BJ Daniels and this is romantic suspense and it really worked for me. I liked it a lot. In fact, I ended up requesting the sequel to this on NetGalley to review because I, I really enjoyed this. Something about it just worked for me having the combination of the romance with something else, like another plot line I just enjoyed. So it's set at this kind of isolated ranch and there's a murder mystery kind of thing going on alongside this romance and yeah, I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed it. I will probably read more from this author. So yeah, I didn't know this was a thing and I have never read in the genre before, but this one at least I did like. My next four star read was another arc from NetGalley. I'll put a picture here so you can see what it looks like. This is A Danger to Herself and Others by Alyssa B. Scheinmill. I really enjoyed this one. It's a YA thriller about a girl in a mental institution who's slowly coming to terms with some things that happened. And I really liked it. I thought it was very well done, gets out a lot of interesting issues. Um, I don't want to say much about it, but I, it's it's good. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. My next four star read is a book that I ended up really loving and this is another one that I listened to on audio. I have had the arc of it for a while and I'm happy that I picked it up. This one's probably not going to be the book for everyone, but I did really enjoy it. This is Jack of Hearts and Other Parts by Elsie Rosen. This is like a very, what they call a voicey novel, I guess. The main character has a very strong voice. I really enjoyed it. I liked him. He calls Jack this unapologetically queer teen, which I think is very, very accurate. He's like quite unapologetic about who he is and he has sex with a lot of people and he starts writing a sex advice column and so there's a lot of really specific 
sex advice that comes through in here and also there's him having sex with various people. I think there's a lot of good information in here. I think it's well done and this is sort of contrasted with a stalker that he starts dealing with and bullying and so I think it's like really well crafted it gets at a lot of really big issues and this talks about all sorts of things gay sex straight sex the gross parts of things the good parts of things and I think it's it's done pretty well so this is not a book that everybody is going to be super comfortable with I ended up really enjoying it I thought it was really well done I thought I think there's a lot of good information in here and I think it's really thought-provoking as well to look at the problematic ways that we sometimes interact with people from other groups or minority groups in ways that fetishize them. So anyway, this is really good. I liked it. Four stars. This month I was participating in Blackathon, which was a readathon hosted by Lauren over the novel Lush, Jesse at Bowties and Books, and Francina Simone. And so a lot of the books that you're going to see coming up were books that I picked up as part of that, including this. This is actually an arc of a graphic novel that I had received quite a while ago and I finally got around to reading it and I really ended up enjoying it. This is called Norway by Kit and Kat Seaton, book one, The Black Bull of Norway. This is a fantasy retelling of I think like an Irish or Scottish, Scottish fairy tale. Okay, so it's based on a classic Scottish fairy tale, but it's got a main character who's a woman of color. It's got lots of magic and humor in it. I really enjoyed it. I would read on in the series. My next four star read is also something that I was reading for Blackathon and this was a buddy read with Katrina over at the fabulous Book Fiend. This is Black Enough Stories of Being Young and Black in America edited by Edie Zaboy. So this actually has 17 short stories by black YA authors. I really really liked this both of us liked it and the way that we did the buddy read is we read one story every day for the first 17 days of the month which I think is a really great way to do this honestly is to consume this in little bits the stories are all very very different from each other so it's not the kind of thing that I think you can easily just read all at once but I think picking in here and there and reading one at a time is really good. Individually the stories were a mixed bag. Some of them were amazing, some of them were just fine and pretty simple, but overall I think this book does a really great job of painting a portrait of the different types of experiences of young black people in America. The stories present characters with all different sorts of of experiences that cross boundaries in terms of gender, sexuality, gender identity, education level, socioeconomic level, children of immigrants from Africa, children of immigrants from other places like Haiti. There's such a variety of experiences in here and I think it's really really well done and they also get into things like multiracial identity and what if you don't look or act black enough and what does that even mean and so yeah overall I think this is a really great collection. It's well worth picking up and reading. There's some fantastic fantastic stories in here. Um, yeah, so overall I ended up giving it four stars. My next four star read is one that I'm so happy I finally got around to. So guys, this month I finally finished reading the rest of the DC Icon books that I hadn't read yet that had been sitting on my shelf for a long time. This is one that I listened to on audio. It is Catwoman Soul Stealer by Sarah J Mass. I do have the beautiful UK special edition version of this. It's really pretty. I love it a lot. And it's got a signed book plate, guys. Yeah. Oh, these are so pretty. Anyway, um, I gave this four stars. I really enjoyed it. I think, like, you can definitely see a lot of similarities between Throne of Glass and the way that she has, I mean, you have, like, Selena, Selena Sardothian and Selena in, like, Catwoman. There's just, there's a lot of similarities. I think if you like Sarah J Mass's writing, you'll probably enjoy this. I think that if you are a big fan of the comics, version of Catwoman and a stickler for that. You might not like the liberties that she takes with this so much, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was well done. It was a lot of fun. And I think that actually she does a pretty good job of diversifying her cast in here as well. You have Luke, what is it, Fox? I guys, I'm really bad at this, but Batwing is the sort of alternate character in here that she's relating to. Luke is black, and I think she actually does a pretty good job of unpacking some of those issues of race and privilege, and that even being a person of color from a wealthy family doesn't take away the effects of racism on you. So yeah, anyway, I enjoyed this in general. I gave it four stars. I thought it was pretty good. I think if you like Sarah J Mass, it's worth picking up. My next four star read is a book that I think 
is going to be a polarizing one. Like I think people are going to love it or hate it and looking at the reviews so far I think that's kind of true. Much like the Hazelwood was sort of a polarizing book, this is the same way. It's not going to be the book for everyone, but I generally liked it. It's kind of a weird one. This is The Waking Forest by Alyssa Weiss. Um, it is a very, it, it's like a very weird fever dreamy sort of fairy tale. They called it like the Hazelwood meets Pan's Labyrinth and I think that's pretty spot on. I would say if you liked The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert and you're up for reading something that's even weirder and more fever dream like, then you might like The Waking Forest. I don't want to say too much else about it. I thought the writing was interesting. It's sometimes quite grotesque as well. There's a lot of like body horror type stuff mixed in here. So this is one of these books where some people are going to absolutely love it and a lot of people are going to really hate it. But if that sounds interesting to you, it might be worth picking up. My next four star read is one that I'm not going to show you. This is for my secret project video thing that I've been working on since November. <laughs> But I read one book this month for that. I gave it four stars. It was one of my rereads. And that's all I'm going to say about that until that video comes out. I only have one book left, guys, to read for this project. So March. It's going to happen. And I'm editing as I go, so it's coming. Okay. The final four star read that I had this month was another e-arc from Nat Galley. This is Bloodleaf by Crystal Smith. It is a debut YA fantasy novel that is coming out I think sometime in March and I really enjoyed this. I think uh, some people are gonna not be a fan because it does this trope that we see a lot of where it's a princess trying to save her kingdom, get back her throne, it's a trope we've seen a lot in YA, but I really liked the way she did it. I liked the world that she built. I enjoyed the storytelling. I liked the fact that the stakes are pretty high. She's not afraid to kill off characters and it takes a little bit of a darker turn for YA fantasy sometimes. I also thought it was really interesting that our main character is able to see ghosts and spirits and when they touch her she can experience the moment of their death and that plays a role in the story. I liked it. I thought it did some really interesting novel things. I thought it was pretty well written. It didn't stick the landing perfectly. The ending was just okay, but it is a debut novel, so I would read on in the series. I, I'm intrigued enough to continue, and I'm curious to see more from this author in the future. So yeah, I think if it's a genre that you like, if those sorts of things sound interesting to you, go check it out. Okay, then I had four books that I gave four and a half stars to. The first one, <laughs> the first one is one that I had really been anticipating. I did end up quite liking it, but I think this is a book where you're going to either love the ending or hate the ending. This is King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. This is Nikolai's story. I generally really loved this. I love Zoya. She's hilarious and amazing. You actually get three perspectives in this. You get Nikolai, you get Zoya, and you get Nina, who was in the Six of Crows duology. I really liked it. I liked all of their stories. I liked the way it came together. I have mixed feelings about the ending, so I won't give specifics because it's quite spoilery, but people are going to love the ending or hate the ending. I I don't know. It's fine. I, I don't love it. I don't hate it. It's probably why it's got four and a half stars, though, so yeah. King of Scars, guys. Woo! My next four and a half star read was the pick for the Dragons and Tea book club, and this also met one of the challenges for the Blackathon readathon that I participated in. I really, really liked this a lot. This is A Girl Like Her by Talia Hibbert. She is a black indie romance author, and this is my second book of hers that I've read, and I've really quite enjoyed both of them. In this book, our female heroine is autistic and super nerdy and into comics. And it's actually own voices for autism, which I think is really, really cool. I think it's a beautiful romance that develops between her and her neighbor. There's also a lot of like interesting external conflicts that they're dealing with, but their relationship with each other is pretty strong. And the conflict that happens mostly has to do with her working through some of her issues related to being autistic. I loved this. I thought it was such a sweet romance. I was really invested in both characters and loved seeing them come together. Overall, I really liked it a lot. <laughs> Honestly, the only thing that took this down a star for me is there's like an entire chapter devoted to this scene of her 
giving oral sex and I was like, Meh. like just the way it was hand I mean it wasn't like there were no issues with like consent or anything. All of that was handled well. It just like I just didn't particularly appreciate that the way that was done. It's fine. Like I'm sure there are people who read that and that's great. I just was like, nah. Uh, but otherwise, really, really enjoyed this. Very much recommend. I thought it was very well done. My next four and a half star read is the other book by an indie author, and this was actually sent to me by the author for review. I liked this a whole lot. So thank you so much for sending me a copy. This is Starmark Rising by Shami Stavall. I love the cover on this. I, I've like destroyed this book, but I, I really enjoyed this. This is adult science fiction. It's interesting. It took me a little while to get into it because it's actually told through the perspective of a male character, but uh, yeah, this book is really good. So I would actually recommend Starmark Rising to fans of the Mass Effect video games or that sort of science fiction. It's set in this hierarchical world where superhumans rule everything. I thought it was really well executed. It had a lot of great twists and turns that were unexpected. It's got very complex, very, very interesting characters, which, you know, I like a good character-driven story, but it's also got good action. I thought it was a nice balance. So we follow this guy, Clavon DeMarco, who has quite a rap sheet, is pretty cocky, and he's also probably what you would classify as being pansexual because he just kind of want wants to hook up with everybody all the time, regardless. And like, that, that's his deal. He's that kind of guy. Um, he ended up really growing on me a lot through the course of the book. I liked him a lot by the end. At the beginning, I was like, dude, seriously. <laughs> like, but um, you end up really liking him a lot, I think. So he's taken on as a crew member of the spaceship Starmark, and the captain of the ship is this lady here, Endelian Voigt. And God is she Slytherin. She is ruthless in her ambition and will not let anything get in her way. And lots of things happen. So I really enjoyed this a whole lot. I was quite impressed. I would recommend. And my final four and a half star read this month was another audiobook that I used to get something off my shelf. I'm really glad I read this. This is How to Keep a Secret by Sarah Morgan. I have been loving Sarah Morgan. I think I will continue to read more from her. She just writes these really interesting complex characters with family dynamics and secrets that I don't know. I just find them very, very compelling. This one follows two sisters, their mother, and one of their daughters as they deal with secrets from the past and trauma and pain in the present. It's got romance, it's got family, it's just got everything. I thought it was really well crafted. Um, yeah, I loved this a lot, so I will be reading more from her. Okay, finally, it is time for my five star reads. This is very exciting. Again, there were nine of them. Sorry, I know these videos are super long, but it is what it is. A lot of you guys like them anyway, just like do other things while you listen to me talk about stuff. <laughs> It'll be fine. Um, okay, so my first five star read is one that I'm so happy that I finally picked up. This is Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor, the second book in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. I'm hoping to probably finish this up in March. I loved this book so much. I don't know if you remember, but I think I gave three and a half stars to Daughter of Smoke and Bone, but when I finished it, I thought I would probably end up giving five stars to the next book based on the way some things played out, and I was right. This one almost made six stars for me. Um, it's really, really good. This was like everything that I wanted it to be with high stakes, complex characters, a little bit of dark humor and romance that's added in. Uh, yeah, I don't want to say too much about it because it's the second book in the series, but I really loved it a lot. And as always, Lainey Taylor's writing is just beautiful. My next five star read is the other book in the DC Icon series that I listened to this month. This is Batman Nightwalker by Marie Lu. I love Marie Lu. This was no exception. I really liked her take on a young Bruce Wayne. I thought it was really well done. It was nice to see the way that she integrated different characters and kind of thought through what might Bruce Wayne have been like before he was Batman. Uh, yeah, five stars. I really liked it. I know, again, as with all of these books, some of the people who are real sticklers on the original comics have some issues with it, but I enjoyed this quite a lot. I thought the audiobook was really good as well. My next five star read might be the first five stars that I've given to a romance novel in a long time, but I really loved this. It is Forbidden by Beverly Jenkins. She writes great historical romance. 
They are very heavy on the history, which I enjoy and appreciate. They're slower burn romances, they're more plot heavy, they're more history heavy, and I really liked this one a lot. This one is interesting because it deals with this issue of passing. So the heroine is a black woman, and our hero in this story is mixed race. So his mother was a slave and his father was a white slave owner, but he's able to pass as white and has sort of built this life for himself with wealth. But when this woman comes into his life, he falls for her and has to make a decision during that time period where it was obviously like illegal for to have interracial relationships or marriages what he was going to do about it. So I thought this was really good. It was really well done. The history was super interesting. Yeah, five stars. I am loving Beverly Jenkins. Uh, she's become a new favorite. My next five star read was the other graphic novel that I read. I got this one out from my library, so I will put a picture here. This is called As the Crow Flies by Melanie Gilman. This is another one that I'd read for Blackathon, much like Forbidden as well. Um, yeah. This I thought was very, very well done. It was really interesting. It's about a young black girl who goes on a sort of camping, hiking retreat that's church-based. And her wrestling with faith and church where there's been some issues in terms of the way race has been handled, in terms of the way that queer people have been handled. And so as the story progresses, you start to realize that she is queer. And I really liked the artwork. I liked the way the story was told. And it's really left pretty open-ended and open to interpretation. I think you could either interpret it as her coming to a place of choosing to turn away from her faith because of the things that have been going on, or you could interpret it as her growing into a better understanding of it and figuring out how to bring her faith into something that makes more sense for who she is and what she believes. So uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I think it's well worth picking up. My next five star read this month was The Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty. This is the sequel to City of Brass and I loved it. I loved City of Brass last year. I'm always a little bit nervous especially um, because City of Brass was her debut novel and so I was like well is this going to be able to keep up with what City of Brass was? In my opinion it totally did. I loved everything about this. I thought it was fantastically done. This is a series that I think you're going to enjoy if you like political intrigue, if you like slower character driven stories with complex characters and really lush beautifully described settings. This is a Middle Eastern fantasy series that is inspired by the history and mythology of ancient Arabia and I love it. I think it's fantastic. So yeah, definitely gave five stars to Kingdom of Copper. My next five star read is another one that I picked up because it had been on my bookshelves for a while and it was such a pleasant surprise. I had been putting this off because I'd heard such mixed reviews about it, but I loved it. This is Girls Made of Snow and Glass by Militia Basherdust. This one came out late in 2017, and it's a sort of retelling of the Snow White story with a twist. And I really loved it. I thought it was great. I'm glad I put some space between when it came out and when I read it, because when it initially came out, a lot of people were like, eh, it wasn't that great, but I was a fan. I think if you like complicated characters and darker retellings, you might be into this. This one is interesting because it follows a dual timeline narrative. A part of this too, guys, is I really love villain backstories. I have a soft spot in my heart for them, and this one has a good villain backstory to it. You follow the sort of evil queen character from the time she was a teenager, and you see how she develops to become who she ends up being and why, and why maybe the stories of female villains villains are told in particular ways that might not be true to their actual experience of them. And I think this kind of deconstructs that a little bit. Similarly, you also follow the sort of Snow White character as she's growing up as a young girl and is also really pushing back on the expectations. I think that's the really the big theme in the way this book is told is it's about women pushing back on the expectations that are placed on them by society and by men and writing their own stories and rewriting the way that they might interact with fate and destiny and yeah, I loved it. I thought it was great. So I would recommend this one. The cover is isn't the best, but really good book. Three more, and uh, one of these is actually a reread. I gave five stars last year. 
I reread The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. This was the group book for Blackathon, and I had read the physical copy last year. This time I listened to it on audio. It was just as good. It was so powerful. I recommend it both ways. Um, yeah, this is amazing. It's a novel told in verse, and it is sort of this coming-of-age story of Xiomara, who is a young Afro-Latina woman living in New York and discovering herself and dealing with family and religion and first love and a lot of different things and I just I love it I find a lot of things in it to be very very relatable and it makes me emotional even on a second read so yeah it deserves five stars really really good this was a favorite of mine last year Next is another audiobook that I listened to, and this was my nonfiction pick for the month. I listened to Eloquent Rage, A Black Feminist Discovers Her Superpower by Brittany Cooper. This book was actually gifted to me from Mara over books like Whoa, Thank you so much. I know this is one of her favorite books last year. It's really great. This is a collection of essays that's part memoir, part sort of black feminist discussion, I guess, by the author who is in fact a professor. I found this to be really thought-provoking and powerful and just really good, so go pick it up! And um, she reads the audiobook herself. It's really quite good and easy to get through. It's not very long, so I'm happy to also have a physical copy, so thank you, Mara. And my final five-star read this month was the second book in a novella series that I've been reading. This is Binti Home by Nnedi Okorafor. I also gave five stars to the first one. I kind of love this a lot. She is a Nigerian-American author and she's writing speculative fiction set in Africa and in space. I would say that the first novella in the series has a lot more sci-fi elements to it. This one feels like more of a sci-fi fantasy blend. I think if you like N.K. Jemisin you should definitely check these out. I am excited to get to the final book in the trilogy. Night Binti Night Masquerade is the third one so I'll be picking that one up soon. Um, yeah, I don't want to say too much else about them because they're pretty short. The first book is 90 pages, the second one is 150, and the third one is 200 pages. So they get a little bit longer, but I just love what she does here for so many reasons. Definitely recommend. Okay, and then I had two six star reads, which means these are favorites of the year, and um, both of them. I'm surprised, honestly, made this list, but let's talk about them. So the first one is a book that I picked up on the recommendation of Matthew Sharapa. I will link his channel down below if you guys want to go check him out. He reads a lot of literary fiction and translated fiction, and this is a book that he raved about so much that I thought, okay, let me try this. So I got on a waiting list for the audiobook from my library. I finally got it. I listened to it, and I loved it so much that I had to go out and buy myself a physical copy to own as well. So this is The Court Dancer by Kyung Suk Shin. It is translated from Korean and this is historical fiction. Oh my goodness, it is beautiful. I loved it so much. I know you guys have, I've said that I like character driven books. This is definitely a character driven book. Her writing her writing is just so beautiful. There's so many things. I At some point I probably want to go back and reread this and mark things in it because I don't know guys I like I have a hard time even knowing how to talk about this a book but it basically is following the life of this young woman who is an orphan in Korea who becomes a court dancer for the king and then eventually catches the eye of a Frenchman and goes to Paris as a Korean woman back in this time period. When would this even have been? This would have been like Belle Epic Paris. Okay, so this is Belle Epic Paris. So the same time period in Korea and it's just brilliant and it's fascinating the way it deals with identity and interracial relationships and racism and like womanhood and I don't know there's just there's so much. It's so rich. It's beautiful. I would definitely recommend this. Um, if that sounds at all interesting to you, I really loved it and I think it's going to stick with me for a while. This is not going to be the book for everyone. It's not fantastical. It is a slower paced book. You, the, I think the audiobook is great. That's a really great way to read it, but it's, it's beautiful. So yeah, anyway, The Court Dancer. That was a surprise. I mean, I thought I would maybe like it. I didn't expect it to be a favorite. And the final book I want to talk about today is another one that I I hoped I would like, but I didn't expect to connect with it as much as I did. This is Sadie by Courtney Summers. 
Again, I listened to this on audio. I do recommend the audiobook. I think it's very, very well done. It's won awards, actually, and deservedly so. The production value is really good. Oh, guys, this is an interesting one. This is like a very dark contemporary YA book that's got like some thriller elements to it. And I, I think the way the story is told is incredibly effective. So you go back and forth between the perspective of Sadie, who is a teen girl who is going on a quite dangerous road trip to try to avenge the death of her sister. And she is a young woman who has experienced um, abuse and trauma, and she also has a stutter, which really affects a lot of things for her. And then the other thing that you get is a podcast. And so you hear snippets from the podcast, interviews with people on the podcast as they're looking for Sadie and trying to figure out what happened to her and what happened to her sister who was found dead. Um, and then also kind of the notes of the podcaster as he's doing research. I loved this. I think it's a very important book. I think it is really brilliantly crafted. It's not a happy book, and I think some people didn't like the ending, but I loved the ending. I thought the ending was exactly what it needed to be. It is very, very dark, and I've heard some people say that they think maybe this shouldn't be considered YA because of the subject matter. I disagree. <laughs> Um, and I'll tell you why. The thing that makes this feel to me like a YA book is that you never get explicit descriptions of what's happening in the abuse. There is just enough information to paint a really clear picture of what is going on, but without getting explicit in the way that I think an adult book would. But I think this is actually really an important book for teenagers because I think these are things that people are really dealing with. And the thing that I think this book does so, so well that I think needs to happen more and needs to be talked about is the fact that predators and pedophiles might not always look like what we think they should look like. That they can be kind, upstanding members of the community who have this dark side and they often prey on people who are most at risk. So like in this case, single moms who are struggling to make ends meet and juggling a million things and are happy to have what who's the, a person who seems like a great male figure or role model who's stable in their kids' lives. Um, and that there are warning signs to look out for. And uh, yeah, so it's heavy. It's dark. The subject matter in here is really dark. But I think it's an important book and it's, it's real. I actually, <laughs> I actually have had um, a personal connection to somebody like this, to a predator, where I and other people around uh, around me never would have known that that was what was going on, and it wasn't until years later that it came out um, that 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 was what was happening. That this person that we knew, who was funny and a part of the community and in church and everything, had been abusing his stepdaughter and think I went to prison for it but uh, yeah like it's real and I think this gives voice to something that too many teens and young people have dealt with and are actually dealing with and I think it's an important book and I think it is an important book for a young adult audience to read. The only thing that I wish this book did better was giving more resources for people who are dealing with that and in terms of safe ways that they can reach out for help. That's something that I think I would have liked to see more of in here. But otherwise, I think it's brilliantly written. I think the structure works really well. I think the writing is really good. And I think the topics that it deals with are incredibly important. And so, yeah, this is a favorite for me. So, yeah. So there you go. I know it's like a heavy thing to end on, but I, well, worth it. I'm happy that I read it. So those are all of the books that I read in February. I know it's a lot. Thanks for hanging out with me if you've made it this far. Talk to me in the comments down below and let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on any of these books. And for your question of the day, let me know what was your favorite book that you read in February. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.